Today, we're going to be testing out the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra to see if it really is the perfect resin printer for beginners. Of course, we have to start off by unboxing the machine itself. This printer was very kindly sent over by Elegoo for me to test out. As with all 3D printers, they're very well packaged. So already pulled out the regional part of the power cord. This is something new to the Mars 5 machines. It is the drip tray. And then was on to the main thing in this box, which is the printer itself. Putting it on its side like this and pulling it out, I found was the easiest way to get this out of the box, especially if you're unboxing this machine on your own. Really the most time consuming process of actually setting up a resin printer is making sure you've removed all of the plastic and foam from everywhere that they've tucked it into to keep this machine safe during shipping. Even then, it only took me about 10 minutes to get it from completely packed in the box to print ready. As usual, most of the extra pieces are packed inside of the shroud. So you have the tool kit, the build plate, which is this newly designed one, which has like the auto leveling capabilities. It also has the really nice laser etched surface that a lot of the new Elegoo machines have been using lately, which I found works really nicely on prints. The new build plate style also uses this new locking mechanism to keep it in place. This printer also has the built-in camera that can detect print failures as well as record time-lapse videos. And of course, the main new feature on the Mars 5 Ultra, the tilt release function. The vat and screen are always packaged with screen protectors, so make sure you remove both of those before you go to print anything. The vat itself has also been slightly redesigned and now features pore areas on two corners. This printer also has a smart sensor that can detect resin shortage and foreign objects. So basically, if the print starts sticking to the FEP sheet and not on the model itself, it can detect that. The only setup steps left for this printer are attaching the Wi-Fi antenna and plugging in the power cord. Once you turn the printer on, the first thing the machine does is run a self-test to make sure everything is working as it should. This process takes about 30 seconds for the machine to complete. After that, I connected the printer to my Wi-Fi, which then brought up an update, so I installed that as well. Now that the machine is all set up, let's get something actually printing. As of recording this video, Chidu Box is the only slicer with a built-in profile for the Mars 5 Ultra. I'm sure that will change in the future though. The printer also comes with a three month Chidu Box Pro license, which is a nice bonus if you didn't already have access to the software or wanted to try it out. I decided to start off with printing this Ahsoka bust. It's super detailed, so it'll hopefully show off the capabilities of the 9K screen this printer has. In terms of settings, the only things I modified were the layer height and resin exposure times. Loaded up some resin into the printer. Even though this is a rapid resin, it stated that you can still get the benefits of super fast printing with the tilt release technology with any type of resin. This is just the only standard resin that I have in my workshop at the moment. Since this machine has automatic leveling, it runs through a few checks and tests before starting the print. These only take a few seconds though. And then it's off to printing. I have to say, it's pretty crazy watching this printer work with the tilting vat, especially when you've been watching the bed lift and lower for years at this point. With the difference in movement, it does make a bit of a different sound when it's printing. It's not necessarily louder, it's just a bit different. I printed this bust at 0.035 millimeter layers, so it did take a bit longer, but under four hours for a piece this size is still pretty good. Of course, made sure that I put on the drip tray before touching the build plate at all. One thing that I have to say about this build plate is I really hope even with the new design that a drip hanger can somehow be designed and added. It's one of the first things that I print for any of my machines, and it's something that I wish printer companies themselves would consider making files for so that they're available immediately. At one point, the Mars printers actually came with their own drip hangers, so having a printable file be available either on the USB stick that comes with the machine or on their website would be great to see. But other than waiting 40 years of my life waiting for this build plate to drip off, this print looks incredible. Printed perfectly, here it is all cleaned off. It wasn't a very tall print, so I didn't activate the time lapse feature for it. It only really works if your print is above a certain height because that's the point where it's beyond the vat edges and you can actually see it on camera. Since Ahsoka turned out so well, I I decided to stick with the bust theme and also finish the Ahsoka print because it was in two parts. The second round of pieces is the base for Ahsoka and a Queen Amidala statue. And because the pieces were taller this time, I decided to try the time lapse feature, which actually works really cool. You basically just turn on the button to say record time lapse and it automatically creates this really interesting video. Anytime there is a time lapse feature on a 3D printer, I'm never quite sure how much the average person might be interested in using it. You know, for me, 
and making these videos on 3D printers, it's an awesome feature to have because then I have this interesting footage that shows the complete process of these prints. Regardless, I suppose in any of the 3D printers cases, the main purpose of the camera is for monitoring and failure detection and the time-lapse feature is just more of a bonus. Once again, these prints looked really impressive straight off of the build plate, but we're really not going to be able to see the full level of detail they have until I clean them off. And level of detail might be the understatement of the century, especially on this Padme bust. The sheer minute detail that this thing has that actually printed out is insane. This might be the most impressive print I've ever done, which I feel like the last one was probably the life-size tiara of this exact same thing, but when you shrink it down to this scale and it still has that level of detail is wild. Also, the base turned out great, but you know, a little lackluster compared to the Queen Amidala. This one did have a few odd lines on it, but I think that was just the angle that this printed at. These were pre-supported files, and so I think it just got a little weird weird with the layer height and also maybe for this particular piece the suction and exposure times maybe just weren't quite there. Overall it still looks really good though. But on to more prints. Now this is where I made my biggest mistake. I went to fill up the vat with some more resin but I had the printer turned off not really thinking about how in this particular printer's case the vat doesn't stay level when it's powered off. Which means the resin isn't level so when you decide to fill it up to the max line it's actually way above the real max fill line. Nothing detrimental happened thankfully. All I did was power the printer on and wait for the vat to level out and then I just went in with one of these giant syringes and removed the excess resin from the vat. It's just going to be something I need to keep in mind when using this machine. Don't fill the vat unless the printer is on. Next onto one of my favorite things to resin print, a lightsaber hilt. Lightsabers always make a great print test because they generally involve a large variety of different sizes and shapes of pieces. Some need to be perfectly smooth, some need to have more refined detail. I also like to showcase that even though this is a smaller printer, it's still very capable of printing life-size props because most files are broken down into many smaller pieces. Also, this is Dagangera's lightsaber from Jedi Survivor. It ended up being three build plates worth of pieces since it's a double-bladed lightsaber. Absolutely none of these parts look like anything separately, so let's get them all cleaned and cured before we start assembling them together. This was a very interesting file because the pieces had threads that would screw together, so there was like no glue required in this assembly, which worked great for a test fit. Major Hu Yang vibes putting all of these parts together. And because this is also technically a split saber, there is a part that you can put magnets into so that it can still split apart or you can keep it as one piece, which is super, super cool. And as with everything else on the Mars 5 Ultra, these parts printed absolutely beautifully. They're pretty much paint ready, other than doing a bit better job removing some of that extra support material. Also, some of the smaller parts are in a darker gray because I was using up the end of a black resin bottle. Yeah, just really, really clean and impressive looking pieces. It really does not get much more flawless looking than these. I wanted to wrap this video up by giving you my final thoughts on the Mars 5 Ultra now that I've had the opportunity to put it to the test with various types of projects. Straight off of the bat, I have to say this printer definitely wins in terms of ease of setup and user experience that I have had so far with a resin printer. I have owned a lot of different types of resin printers and I would consider myself quite experienced, but even then, whenever I have a new machine that I'm trying to get set up, there's just always something. Either the lift speed or lift distance just isn't quite right, the exposure settings are a little off, just there's always something. But this one, I mean, you saw me, it took me like 10 minutes to get it out of the box and basically print ready. I didn't touch any of the printer settings themselves in Cheetu Box for this machine. The only settings that I changed were the exposure settings for the resin, which is pretty standard because all resins are a little bit different. But any of the like lift distance or speed settings in that regard did not touch. But yeah, the default settings in Cheetu Box have been printing nothing but flawless prints for me so far. And I did just want to talk a little bit about the tilt release function because when I first saw the announcement for the Saturn IV machines that had this new type of release mechanism, I was honestly a little concerned because I thought it might start producing blooming on prints, which is actually a term that I only recently found out, even though this is something that I've experienced for years on resin prints. If you've ever printed a more 
more solid chunky piece and there seems to be like an extra residue on it or like the resin hasn't quite cured on the surface of the print. It's actually called blooming. And why it happens is essentially when these larger chunkier prints go back into the resin vat, it disturbs the resin too much. And so when it starts curing, it's still moving the liquid around and it will start to like break off and those broken off pieces then create this residue on the outside of the print. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure someone else could explain it more technically than that. But the overall point is you generally do not want the resin itself moving when you're printing things. And of course, when the literal vat of the printer is moving up and down like this, there's obviously like sloshing of the resin going on. But maybe because it's like such an even and consistent movement to the printer, there was not a single blooming or blooming like effect on any of these prints, which is why I very specifically wanted to try printing a lightsaber because lightsabers are one of the things because they have larger chunkier pieces can very easily develop blooming on them just because those larger pieces are disturbing the resin a lot more. The pieces for this lightsaber are a bit more delicate so I'm not sure if blooming would have appeared on any of my resin printers but the fact that there wasn't blooming on any of these pieces and that resin is continuously sloshing around I would say that blooming is not an issue with the movement functions that this machine has. And I have to say the tilt release function is I'm pretty sure directly responsible for just how insanely fast this printer runs. The printer itself has a high speed and low speed mode. I kept it on high speed the entire time because why not? Like I did not believe the print time estimate that Chitu Box was giving me every time I was slicing something, but it was pretty much dead on or even faster when it actually printed. And I thought like, oh, are these pieces just not actually as tall as I think they are? So I took the long part of this lightsaber handle, which was the tallest, I believe, print out of any of these pieces, which mind you, printing this piece here, I can undo it here. It didn't quite print straight up and down. It was like it tilted a little to the side, but it pretty much just stayed the exact same height. And you can see that is not a small piece. And this took the Mars 5 Ultra less than four hours to print. And as a comparison, I sliced it up as an estimate for the Mars 4 Ultra. You know, I'm using pretty similar exposure settings per layer. The speed settings you can't really compare, but my standard settings that I would have used for this piece had I printed it on my Mars 4 Ultra had this print taking like nine hours. I know that's just a slicer estimate, but I've found that the estimates have been pretty dead on for that machine. But even if the actual print took less time than the estimate, this machine is still essentially printing it more than twice as fast. I'm seriously so impressed with how this tilt release works that I might have to pick up a Saturn 4 Ultra. Listen, I love my Saturn 3, but these are some of the most flawless prints that I've ever gotten off of a printer. And that's within the first week of owning this machine. They might even look better than normal because the pull and suction on the pieces is completely different when you change how the bed is pulling away from the FEP sheet. And I do think it has something to do with how the suction and pull of the pieces has changed when you start tilting the FEP and vat itself as opposed to just pulling the bed off of it. In theory, the tilt motion that it does is a lot less harsh on the pieces themselves. I obviously had an incredible incredibly positive experience using this machine this week, but there were a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Not that I want to take away from the fact that I really do love this printer. The first thing is this drip tray. Now I will say this I think is 100% necessary, especially with that tilting vat. I do not want to think about where the resin would go and what it would possibly damage if you accidentally spilt some in between the vat and the edge. You know, where most resin printers would have that like electrical tape sort of gasket thing around the screen that would protect any resin from seeping into places where you really don't want it. This machine of course can't have that because the whole thing's moving. So that is of course where this comes in, which I do think works very well. However, it does feel a bit flimsy. The closest thing that I could compare this to would be like a 
paint tray, like a home paint tray, either the liners that you put in other ones. It's just that like vacuformed type of thin plastic. I'm just a little concerned as to how it might hold up over time, especially because you do have to take this on and off when you put the shroud on. So I could see this possibly cracking in places over time, which obviously wouldn't be ideal, but it would be even worse if you couldn't actually buy extras of these. I suppose someone could possibly create a 3D printable equivalent of this, or Elegoo could even possibly release their own files for a 3D printable equivalent of this. But it's just something that if this does have the possibility of breaking and it being such an important accessory and part of this machine functioning and like a safety feature, but this really does need to be replaceable in some way, just in case something does happen to the original. I know I briefly mentioned it on a bit of a side tangent, but obviously this machine bears a striking resemblance to the Saturn IV machines. In fact, the Mars 5 Ultra is basically the smaller version of the Saturn IV Ultra, and the Mars 5 is basically the smaller version of the Saturn IV. They have the same tilt release function. Aesthetically, they are basically identical, just in a smaller package, which means it would have been really cool to see this machine have the flip up shroud instead of the fully removable one. It is obviously a lot easier to handle a shroud of this size as opposed to the mid-size printers. But since the two lines of machines do so similarly, like aesthetically and even feature wise match each other, it would have been great to see the continual features matching with that shroud. Neither one of those things are personally deal breakers for me in terms of this printer. I still think it's an incredible machine. There were just a couple of details that I noticed that I really felt the need to mention in this video. I feel like I've talked a lot about the smoothness of this lightsaber, but the crazy details in both of these busts are insane. Honestly, I thought that these two would have been a lot closer in size to each other, but it actually ended up working out for the best because on this Queen Amidala bust, you can see just the crazy level of fine detail that this printer is capable of. You know, it is a 9K screen packed into a smaller printer, which means the pixel density is insane, and you can definitely see it pay off in this model. Hopefully this is going to show up on camera, but you can literally see the texture on the tiara, which of course I have built before, so I know in life-size scale just how crazy detailed this tiara is, and it is equally as detailed on this model, except it's like a tenth of the size. You know, I'm not somebody that's typically printing a super small scaled and like a tabletop miniature types of models, so when I get the chance to print really detailed models like this, it sort of blows my mind to an extra degree. Of course, with with all that being said about this printer, we have to talk about the beginner friendly aspect to this machine, which is to say that I do think this is an incredibly beginner friendly resin printer. If you've ever been somebody that has asked me about a beginner friendly resin printer, then I've probably told you to stick to smaller sized machines. And my reasoning behind that is the smaller printers have smaller messes. They're a whole lot easier to handle. Normally, if you have somebody that has no experience with resin printing, they're probably at some point not going to put enough supports on a model. They're not going to quite have their resin exposure settings dialed in perfectly. And when that happens, the steps that need to be taken in terms of making sure the vat is clean and dealing with all of that can be quite messy. And that's only compounded by inexperience. Even I, however many years into resin printing I am at this point, can still make quite the mess. Sometimes luck is not on your side and things just happen. And the things that happen will only get worse if you're dealing with more resin volume. Of course, it always depends on what you're personally interested in printing, but in a lot of cases, the models are broken down into smaller parts that are more than capable of fitting on a machine this size. Look, we've got a full-blown double-ended lightsaber here that printed no problem on this printer. And even as somebody that primarily builds life-size replica props, the smaller size machines are by far my most most used size of resin printer. I would say probably nine out of 10 times I will use this size printer for my projects. Because again, the smaller size is just so much easier to handle for everything. But yeah, overall, the Mars 5 Ultra, incredibly beginner friendly. No hassle for setup, it's given me nothing but flawless prints. Some of that, of course, it can come down to experience, but having a printer that is super reliable and low hassle is going to be able to set you up for success a lot 
lot better. Big fan of the Mars 5 Ultra. It definitely gets the prop shop stamp of approval. If you're somebody that's been looking at getting into resin printing or have been specifically interested in the Mars 5 Ultra, then I don't think you would be disappointed at all in this printer. If you're interested in finding out more information and details about the Mars 5 Ultra, there will be links in the description box. But that is everything. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.